Hello and welcome to episode 0 0.5. Uh, if you are just catching in now in episode 0, we checked out and dealt with the system creation and race creation for our new series that I will be uh, creating and playing in. Um, and now we're going to be going into ship design and ground design for our nation. Uh, I'm going to try and keep the tutorialization a little bit less in this episode because we've got a lot of ground to cover in a very, relatively speaking, short amount of time. But suffice it to say, what we're going to be doing is unlocking components, building ships, going over kind of what kind of fleet we want to have, and um, coming up with a defense strategy as well as a just, you know, what do we need to actually make sure the race can function at game start. So, in terms of our naval forces, in terms of our military naval forces, we've got to consider what we want our trans Newtonian Empire to be able to do. Now, I like to conceptually use the current belief in modern naval warfare on naval capability. So you have a brown water navy, a green water navy, and a blue water navy. In this case, a green water navy likely applies the best. A green water navy is one which is focuses on control of its littoral waters or rivers and um, coastlines, and also has and has only has limited ability to strike outwards at opposing forces. This means that, due to the size of Empire, it doesn't make much sense for us to go developing 100,000 ton uh, military carriers when, realistically speaking, we're not going to be expanding that fast to need that capability, and if logistics can't keep up with it anyway, what is the point? Especially when we consider how few economical resources we have available. Now, we do have access to um, build points, which will allow us to build our navy or spawn it in, but we have to budget around those build points. So we have 86,400 build points, and we need to budget around that, and that's going to include ground forces and also commercial vessels. So, what are we going to do then? Um, I'm going to start with uh, some of the more boring ships. So we're going to need immediately a commercial engine. We're going to go over here. We are going to... We're going to be instanting all these, by the way. You would use these with your research points, but... Um, Obviously speaking, we don't have we don't have enough of them originally, so I'm just going to instrument as needed. We're going to put our engine pad down, and we're going to get ourselves a commercial uh, nuclear gas core engine, and then we're going to use that for various things. We're going to create a freighter to start with, a very box standard freighter. Uh, but one thing that I am going to make sure that I have for all of these freighters is a thermal sensor and also electromagnetic sensor because uh, both of those things are going to be extremely useful when we are dealing with potential raiders. Um, or any opposing forces. We do want to have those additional sensor capabilities. We'll put two of those on. Uh, we're going to put a conscript crew on, of course. And uh, we are going to add in the cargo hold. We're going to do a standard cargo hold for this guy. And then we're going to need some fuel, of course, uh, and potentially a second engine. You know, let's go for three engines. This does increase the cost significantly because it's 75 galaxy per engine, but that extra speed is really going to be useful, especially in expansion. Uh, in terms of fuel, uh, we are going to go with a million liters of fuel per. That gives them 86 billion kilometers of range. That does mean that we are going to be burning quite a bit of fuel, generally speaking. In combined with our entire navy, however, we will be harvesting from um, the gas giant in Alpha Centauri 2. So with that freighter basically done, um, I'm go I am going to make that a little bit more rounded, that number, just to make it look nice. So 30, oh, I know why that does that. We're going to need to add in a maintenance. If it ever does this, by the way, just put in a fighter maintenance storage bay and it'll sort it out for you. We're going to copy the class uh, and we're then going to get rid of the cargo hold and we're going to make a cryogenic transport uh, equal to 100,000 tons. 100,000 uh, cargo berths. Um... But we are going to just round that up to the tenth. There we go. And we're going to put this, designate this as the C version. And then we're going to designate the other version as the F version for freighter and for colony ship appropriately. Uh, so that's our freighters done. Uh, we are going to need um, other kinds of transports and, and other things coming up here. So what we're going to do is we're also going to copy, we're going to create a new class actually. I'm going to create a just generic troop transport. Now, when we're designing our troop transport, we need to be thinking in the future, our future uh, you know, tense of, of what 
size base formation we're going to have, right? So let's say we have a battalion, and then we have a regiment, and then we have a division, okay? And that's the sending order uh, or of sizes. We want to be able to move, a, let's say, a division around. But that may be 200,000 metric tons, or transport tons. And one ship is not going to be able to do that unless we make a very, very big ship. So we need to think about hierarchical uh, movement. So let's talk about the regiment. So the regiment will have, four, let's say, four battalions in it. And each of those battalions will have 10,000 tons each. That will then also give, will also give the HQ 10,000 tons of capacity because it needs supplies to feed those battalions. So we get a total of 50,000 tons, which means that we need a 50,000 tons of worth of troop transport uh, capacity to be able to move a regiment around. That will then allow us to have four troop transports to move a single division around, um, which is much more um, much more palatable in terms of size of ship and cost um, and allows us to be a little bit more specialized in what we need. So I'm going to add here... Um, 50,000 tons worth of troop transport capacity. This is still going to be a pretty big ship, and it's going to be pretty expensive. But ground forces, you need to move a lot of them around and uh, do that, yeah, just a lot. Uh, we are going to add in uh, four engines as well uh, because of the extra size. Give me a pretty slow boy, but again, this is the commer this is a commercial uh, ship, of course. Um, and then we're going to add in, let's do 48 billion kilometers worth of range. Conscript crew, make sure we add in electromagnetic and a thermal sensor. Very nice. Uh, and we are going to round up to where we can, if possible. Commercial ships, unless I'm less, um, worried about the actual tonnage itself there. But we are also going to then rename this. Uh, and I would like to select some proper names. Uh, so if I go to RM... Uh, class theme, RMN, uh, we're going to call this, we can call this the Achilles, uh, let's go for the Achilles, Achilles troop transport, and I'm also going to make sure I'm going to put a T there, so that I know about it, it's got conscript crew as well, very good, so we have a freighter, a colony ship, and a troop, a troop transport, okay, now we need to be thinking about some other kinds of ships, um, I'm going to want stations, that's going to require a tractor beam and the ship capable with that tractor beam. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to go down. I'm going to hit and create a tug. Uh, and we're going to just need a lot of engines and then also a tractor beam capacity. Remember, again, we can build these immediately without shipyards. But we need to make sure that our shipyards are going to be able to deal with it. So if you have a look currently on our shipyards, uh, we have two commercial yards and a bunch of naval yards. A bunch of naval yards, in fact. But we have very little commercial shipping, and so we've got to be very careful about that fact. Again, why I would use stations instead of, uh, like, a mobile fuel harvester or a mobile terraformer is because I'd rather use industrial capacity to build things instead of buying more shipyards, which take more funds and are very expensive to build up, and the infrastructure to maintain. And so it's going to be much better to instead have some kind of a tug. We're going to put a tractor beam on. We're going to put some engines uh that's 1200 ep we're gonna go let's say let's go with a 20,000 ton ship um we're gonna i'm gonna make sure again we're gonna put on an em and a thermal sensor make sure that's a conscript crew and then we're also going to increase the fuel um to an appropriate amount which is about this much um is appropriate 20,000 tons for that's 500 kilometers per second this should be able to move most ships that we need uh, because we have an EP of 1800, or most stations that we need, it's not the biggest tug ever, um, but for our needs for right now, that'll be more than enough. Uh, I'm going to call it the or the caravan class tug, okay? And then we're going to need the tanker uh, to be able to move that fuel around. So we're going to create a tanker uh, that is going to require a refueling system. So we can put refueling system one. We're going to put on. Uh, let's do a ten thousand ton ship. So realistically speaking, in terms of fuel amounts, we get this is a thousand tons per. So we're going to do five thousand five million liters of fuel per uh, tanker. Pretty small tanker overall, um, which we may need to have a bigger tanker. Generally speaking, however, for now. 
it'll work. It would be able to transport fuel back and forth pretty easily. We need to put an engine on, so we'll put a single engine on. Uh, and in terms of crew, it's going to be conscript crew, of course. Uh, you know, I, I rationalize that as like merchant marine, uh, not, uh, you know, anything else. Thermal and electromagnetic sensor, please. And then the remainder of the size can go into fuel as well. And we will make sure that rounds to 10,000 tons because that's when... So the commercial shipyard start out with as well. So there we go. We've got a very nice little tanker there. We're going to make sure that's renamed. We're going to call that the Arethusa class. We've got a tanker to transport a freighter and a tug. Now we're going to need to design some stations. Um, I think those that's the basics what we need to transport tanker, freighters, and the tug. Uh, I can't think of any other civilian ship that we may need. So we're going to design ourselves a uh, fuel harvester. So we're going to go over here. We're going to do fuel harvester station. And we're going to see a lot of fuel here. And we're also going... Oh, also I need to make sure I designate that as a tanker. There we go. Um, and what I'm going, to, I'm going to copy this class. And I've got this. I'm going to create a version that uses... That's for supplies, not for tanking. Uh, so we're going to go to maintenance storage. We're going to do large maintenance storage. Oh, that's a bit much. It's a bit much. 20 large maintenance storage. A bit much, in fact. Uh... We're going to carry 10,000 MS, uh, MSP. I'm going to give this a little bit of fuel. Uh, that's a lot of fuel. Let's not do that. Um, we're going to do smalls. There we go. Small little uh, ship that will be able to do our um, MSP transfer. We are going to the cargo shuttle bay, actually, as well. Uh, so I'm going to get rid of a couple of these. And we're going to get... A supply ship designated. We need cargo shuttles, of course, to move those around. I'm going to call this the Arethusa um, Maintenance, or M. And then we're also going to need Collier. But, no, we don't, need a, we don't need a Collier yet. We may need a Collier. We'll see. Um, and actually, something else that I would want to design is probably uh, a smaller freighter for moving minerals around. Uh, for, yeah, for the transport of minerals, but that's going to really depend on kind of our strategy if I'm going to decide to not use mass drivers or not. I, that it's always a thing where I do enjoy the RP of not having mass drivers. But on the other hand, not having them it lags the game. <laughs> so it's kind of a kind of up in the air, right? Uh, but let's go back to designing that station. Um, so we're going to add in sodium harvesters. I'm going to go for a 100,000 ton station. So we're going to be able to harvest approximately 1.6 million liters of fuel. Um, but yeah, that will obviously increase as, as needed. But we're going to uh, add a refueling system in. I'm going to add in enough fuel to be able to take that. I'm going to put in about 3.2 million liters of fuel uh, capacity. In that conscript crew and no armor that as well and then we're going to put in that as a tanker uh, and we're going to make sure that we set a miscellaneous the minimum fuel is one so it will basically have no fuel in it um, and then we'll just tug this around as needed and uh, it's decent cost but that will produce quite a bit of fuel so every year one of these will be able to uh get 1.5 freighters worth of fuel out of a gas of, of gas giant. Obviously, that'll be modified as well by the admin commands and all the other stuff. So, you know, it kind of goes into, into that kind of setup there. Uh, let's go for the Anubis class uh, fuel harvester station. I'm okay with that. Um, we don't have any terraforming modules at the moment, so we can't really do anything in that regard. Um, so, generally speaking, I think we have pretty much everything i'd want uh in terms of commercial stuff this is like bare bones minimum there's a lot more stuff you could potentially add um oh yes one thing i am going to actually do as well is add in uh proper sensors for this there you go just so that it has a little bit of detection capability in case anything does come at it now 
How will we defend our empire? How will we create a navy that will be able to do what we want it to be able to do? So I talked previously about the green water concept, the brown water concept, and the blue water concept. We want to go for the green water concept of being able to defend all the tall waters, which in this, you know, in space concept, in, in, in transition from space concept, that would be the defense of our borders, that would be the defense of um, our planets and systems, but limited capability to strike outwards into um, against an, a larger enemy force, okay? So, in terms of what we're going to need for this, well, as we know, if you've watched the previous series, we're going, our fighters are going to have to come up against potential enemies that will be attempting to murder them. And we need a way to be able to deal with that. And in my opinion, one of the best ways we're going to be able to deal with that is going to be a, what I like to call, a uh, escort carrier. Uh, escort carriers are very valuable because they can use commercial, um, they can use hangars uh, and very high endurance on the main ship and keep a bunch of fighters within their ship that will allow them to, you know, patrol back and forth between areas, escort uh, freighters and whatnot as needed, um, while relatively speaking being quite safe. The second thing that we'll need to do is going to be able to detect our, our opposing forces. And so something like mines and buoys and other things could be very valuable in doing so. And I also want to factor in that I'm going to be role-playing on the verse. So we could do a Q ship, uh, but I don't think that really applies to it. So I'm going to go for, again, a, um, a escort carrier. Okay, so we're going to be building fighters. So let's go over what we're going to be needing for our escort carrier, okay? So the first thing that we're going to do um, is I'm going to grab ourselves um, the, uh, the optimizer, okay? And we're going to kind of decide what kind of tonnage we want to deal with here. So generally speaking, a carrier is going to have about half of its tonnage dedicated towards um, hangar space. A fighter at most can be 500 tons, so 5,000 tons of hangar space can hold uh, a total of 10 fighters. Uh, I would like around a wing, or at least a, maybe a squadron of fighters, so like 18 or 12 or something like that. Um, and we've also got to consider if they're missile fighters, we're going to need a magazine. And if they're beam fighters, um, that's going to be a whole other thing. But since we invested in some missile technology, they're likely going to be missile fighters. And you may be asking, why is this particularly good? Well, we talked about logistics of why that escort carrier will be good for our purposes. But also, um, mi missile fighters and fighters in general will be able to reach a friendly, um, friendly ship in distress much quicker than any other kind of ship because they can be power boosted very, very heavily and they don't rely on having good range because they have a carrier. And so... Think of these a bit like um, a landing dock ship or a helicopter carrier. That's kind of like what we're going to do. They're going to be one of the biggest ships in the fleet. But they are going to be quite heavy. Uh, but the reason that they're big is because they're going to be used quite efficient and they're going to have a lot of endurance. They're not going to have that much firepower. So I'm going to go with a 20,000 ton ship design. Okay. And we're going to input as well all the things that we're going to be needing. So we are on gas core uh, engines. We are on power boost 3.0. We are on I think 100 HS, 0.8 fuel efficiency. Uh, we are on high density uranium. I believe on composite armor. Yes, we are on composites. Um, and since again, we're not. These are not going to be needed to transverse uh, with non jump gated systems. We don't need to give it any more, uh, you know, fuel, uh, not fuel, um, jump drive. We need to give it a jump drive. And that's going to really save on, 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 on what we need. So I'm going to say design engine types commercial. We're going to give it a 2000 kilometer per second uh, speed. I'm going to see what that gives us. So it's giving us um, two very big engines, size 80 engines. With a power boost of 0 0.5, um, with it gets us 2,000 clubs per second, with uh, they are getting those two, two engines exactly. So that's what we're going to do. Two size 80. 
Oh, we don't have size 80 engines. Uh, we are going to need to change that then. Uh, size. So three size 53. Let's go for 20. Can we go for 2400 kilometers per second? What's the uh, speed of our freighters? Uh, freighters. 1250. So 2500 beats per second should be good enough though. I guess not. Uh, let's go for. 1500 kilometers per second. Um, he has a lot more hangar space, but obviously we're going to be a lot slower. So let's go. Can we go 2000 again? Kind of. Uh, 18, 1850. 2100. Okay, 2100. Three size 56 engines. So we're going to uh, grab those. And we're going to go for size. With efficient commercial engines, and we're going to instant that. And the reason that we're doing commercial engines is because it gives a lot more fuel range, and that will be need uh, will be very important for us. So we're going to um, go ahead and uh, or did I prototype by mistake? I might have prototyped by mistake. Okay, we're going to go fifty percent instant. This is uh, the two eighties. Yeah, oh, I didn't. Okay, uh, I'm going to need, I think, three of these. Yep, three. But it is going to be a military vessel. Uh, so I'm going to go for six, five years of deployment time. So it can stay in, in service for five total years um, before any rotation. Uh, it, then we're going to add in hangar decks. Uh, we saw that we had an available tonnage of 11,000 tons. So I'm going to put in... 9,000 tons of hangar decks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8,000 tons, I think, <laughs> is what we're actually going to be able to get here. Um, and then I'm going to add in some additional fuel. A million liters of fuel. It will be moving between patrol lanes, so it'll be, it'll, it'll be okay. Um, bunch of hangar deck capacity. Uh, we are going to need a magazine, though. Uh, so I'm going to bring this down, actually. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna say that'll be twelve fighters total. Deployment time is sixty. We're gonna add in our engineering spaces to get the IFR down, which is the failure rate every five days. Okay, three percent is acceptable. Then we're gonna add in maintenance storage bays to get our maintenance life up. Five point two four years. That's good for me. Then we're going to need to add in some additional. Um, stuff so command and control let's add in a main engineering let's add an auxiliary control as well we're going to call this a escort carrier an escort carrier and we're going to also need some pretty beefy sensors um so i'm going to give it a resolution resolution 10 sensor okay i'm going to make that a size 5 and this is probably going to kill our uh Probably gonna kill our capability in terms of IFR, but it's fine. So we can do that. I'm also gonna give it a size 100 sensor. There we go. And then we're gonna give it a EM and a thermal sensor of pretty big of a 2.5 size each, because those will be very important. Because it needs to be able to see the actual like threat before it sends in the fighters and if this thing because we have no armor on this this is a very much you need to see the threat before you can really do anything uh did i do that yes i did that fine uh em sensor then our active sensors a bunch of actives uh and we don't have any capability in terms of uh point defense but I'm fine with that. Still that five year maintenance life. We've got 3.5 IFR. Um, and then we're going to uh, fill, I think, probably fill the rest up with additional engineering capacity. Yeah, it was plenty of, of, of breathing room. And then we leave it out a little bit more fuel. This ship, relatively speaking, is pretty expensive. However, we'll get, one ship will be able to last, you know, at least uh, five years. 
be able to go back and forth and defend the shipping lanes. Um, it's going to be able to carry at least 12 500 ton fighters, which is plenty in my opinion. And we're going to design the fighter for that. So we're going to need a fighter. We're going to do a fighter bomber. Uh, we're going to call it the S1. S1. Uh, we're going to get rid of the bridge, we're going to get rid of the engineering space, get rid of fuel storage, we're going to then add in a couple of box launchers. Um, now we want probably modularity with our bigger ship, so I'm going to be using uh, size size 6 launchers with boxes. It's 45 tons, that gets us 180 tons, that's 4 box launchers at size 6. So we're going to go instant, and then we're going to uh, put that in. Missile launcher, one, two, three, four. Four of those box launchers, and then we're going to also bring the deployment time down to nine days. And we're going to need some pretty good engines on this. So we're going to go for... Oh, do I not have um, a fuel tech? Should do. Uh, one, yeah, I should, have, I should have this tech, because it's all within the cost. So we are going to uh, sort that out. We don't have three, uh, we have three X, that's too expensive, so we will not be able to get that. At the very least, we can get, um, 2.5, and then we're going to go for a size 150 ton, I think, so 3 HS. 250,000, uh, 250% engine power, and then we're going to slap that onto our fighter bomber. There we go. We're going to need a missile fire control and then some active sensors and also some other stuff. So in terms of the cost of our box launchers to fire, that is 3.6. So we need enough maintenance for that. So I'm going to put in a maintenance bay. That's enough for me. Then we're going to need a missile fire control. We don't really know. Let's design them. I would say a missile should have about 10 million kilometers of range for a fighter um, at this tech level. So that's what I'm going to go for. Uh, we're going to go for a pretty small uh, controller in terms of resolution. So we're going to go for a 500 ton. There's plenty of range for me. And we're going to then also decrease the size to 0 0.2. 0 0.2. This fire control has been added on. We're going to need some fuel. Okay, uh, so that'll be able to go, what is that, 600 million kilometers, uh, that'll be able to go 250 million kilometers without needing anything else. Now, the escort carrier has a sensor on it of range 66 million kilometers. However, what is our attack from the sensors? Pretty good. Um, we're going to need some kind of active sensor, I think. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, just a, a, a small one, uh, because... We need to be able to actually, uh, in, in case the carrier goes down or in case anything else happens, we need to reduce that. We also need a magazine on the carrier, I forgot. Uh, that will need to occur. Um, and then we're going to put in a, that small active sensor. Five tons. And we're going to add a little bit more fuel in. 420. I'd like, I'd really like an even number if possible. Um... We could do no active sensor, but then like speeds are going to kind of be a bit suspect in terms of, of getting to places. Um, so I'm going to reduce this engine actually, and I'm going to make a, I'll obsolete the other engines later, uh, but we're going to go for a 250% engine. And uh, we're going to go for 2.8. Yeah, 2.8. This should reduce us to 8,000 kilometers per second, but I'm okay with that. Yeah. Well, not. It doesn't reduce that much. Get rid of a little bit of the fuel. And that's acceptable to 400 tons, which actually means we can fit like 16 of them on there instead of, uh, you know, only, only 12. Um, so, what we're then going to do is we're going to take off some of the uh, engineering spaces. We need to put a magazine on. Okay, let's assume we have... Okay, 6,000 tons. 
we can fit 12 plus three more so we can have 15 fighters on um this they're going to each use four missiles each we need to have a magazine of 60 uh to be able to reload them once so we need to have a magazine of realistically speaking something like 240 320 Uh, let's go size 18. Let's go size 19. Let's go with that magazine. That's about a thousand tons of, of uh, tonnage. Yep, that magazine on. Uh, and then we're going to need to get rid of um, some of the fuel. We don't need that much more fuel. Because we're not going to be going too far out and also we'll be able to resupply from nearby areas. So that's acceptable. That's acceptable. We're going to put the S1s on. 15 S1s. And we'll also need to design some missiles and all sorts. I can really see how like complex this stuff can get. But there's our escort carrier. Um, and this I think it's giving you a good idea so far of, of kind of what we're going to be going for. I don't want to leave those going too long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a cut here. Uh, and I'm going to go and design um, all the other kind of ships. And then we're going to walk through basically my thoughts and my feelings about them. So I'll see you guys then. Hello, and we're back. So I went through a little bit of design. Again, I cut a lot of that out of the just uh, nuts and bolts of going through everything. But I'm going to go walk through what we've got. So as I was talking about with the Green Water Navy, we've selected uh, a destroyer-based fleet. That will be no larger ship than our escort carrier so we have three new destroyer types and we also have an escort tower at 20,000 tons being our largest possible ship this fleet is purely designed to defend the uh, territorial integrity of our nation and not to go on expeditionary engagement so fuel times are going to be quite limited in comparison to what you would normally expect we have the lysander the merlin and the achilles how these are supposed to be set up is we'll have one Lysander, two Achilles, and then two Merlins. The Lysander class ship, I'm going to turn on a uh, wide view so you guys can see also uh, everything within the ship, of course. It has a, we've set a fleet standard speed of 3200 kilometers per second. The Lysander carries a jump drive but has much reduced armament and some armor um, with the pure purpose of providing some capability in combat but primarily it's jump drive allowing us to secure systems ahead of our needs um, and gives us some limited capability to fight outside of our borders, which is usually the outside of the jump stabilization um, systems. We then have the Merlin. The Merlin is essentially the Achilles, but we've gotten rid of all of the launchers. Uh, in fact, uh, we can probably get rid of some of these mission for missile firing controls, and instead we've stuck on 10 quad course uh, turrets. Um, based on my estimates against our own missiles, uh, we will do uh, 10 times 12 times 0.17, which is the um, turret hit rate, base hit rate for the quad gorse turrets um, that we've selected. You can have 100, but they're much heavier, of course. Um, and the rounding here does work better for us. And we will have be able to destroy 7.3 missiles that are going 30,000 kilometers per second with this uh, destroyer escort. And that's going to be its primary purpose, uh, is destroying incoming missiles. And we've uh, focused it to fight against our own missiles because that's all we know. That We know that the, currently those are the best unit missiles in the universe, so we want to be able to destroy those missiles. Then we have a normal destroyer. Uh, that This destroyer, as you'll know, we have buoys and we have ASHMs. We have size 8 box launchers on the destroyer. Um, this provides us with our primary offensive capability. We have some quad cores and a 15 centimeter ultra laser on pretty much every single destroyer. This, again, provides us with that beam firing troll. So if we disable an enemy ship, we don't have to waste missiles destroying it. We have 26 box launchers, uh, and those will be our primary offensive arm. They've got a longer range than some of our, our fighters uh, or our light attack crafts. Um, and their primary purpose is going to be our offensive arm of our navy. Um, I'm trying to focus our fleet around it. We, we want to deter the enemy. Uh, that's our armed force goal. And if they come into our systems, we are going to blanket them with missiles through their, when they come through the jump points or come through any areas and hope that the uh, specialization of firepower in missile technology will win us it. 
Our engine technology is not too good, and so we're relying on our missiles to do as good a job as possible. Unfortunately, again, our engine tech isn't too good, so we our missiles are relatively weak for what we need. But early on, this is going to be more than enough. So, um, that's the destroyer. And we also have buoys, because destroy another part of the destroyer's job is going to be going around and placing buoys on new systems. So, we may take out um, a couple destroyers, and they may place buoys around jump points or other areas. Um, with the pur express purpose of ensuring lane detection and a layered defense of knowing what is coming through, in, or out. Then we have the um, frigate, the Ares class frigate. The purpose of the Ares class frigate is unlike the destroyers, which are aimed at fighting directly with uh, a peer to peer adversary or higher than that, as in they are our best possible ships, our biggest possible uh, frontline ships. And they will be engaging the bigger fl enemy fleets that come against us. The frigate is a 5,000 ton armor 3 rating, has 24 size 6 box launchers with a range of 12.3 uh, million kilometers. And it will be using the same ordnance as the fighter. It will be using the Alpha 1. And the purpose of this ship is to overwhelm an enemy with as many boxes as it possibly can get on a small tonnage. While also being fast enough, it's 5,000 kilometers per second, to deal with any uh, convoy raiders. And again, it's going to kind of act like an in-system in um, large ship, okay? So it's not going to be like our escort carrier, uh, which is going to be following our convoys. Um, but it is going to be like our... But it is going to be sitting above worlds and acting as a frontline ship that can defend on its own. Um, and patrol as needed, check situations out figure things out um, and it's got more than enough firepower to do that on this very small frame we then have the Covington hangar defense platform this will sit above world and will uh, allow us to base fighters above them uh, which can act as defensive so that we if our destroyers are away we have a specialized defensive uh, platform which can be tugged into range and used it's also a commercial vessel and a space station so we can manufacture these pretty quickly so works well for us. We can also put light attack crafts and, and then whatnot in there. Speaking of light attack crafts, we have a light attack craft here with 5,000 kilometers per second. Has six size six box launchers. And again, it's supposed to be a cheap way to overwhelm an enemy with multiple light attack crafts. You know, maybe three, four light attack crafts can destroy an enemy destroyer or destroy an enemy frigate. And that is worthwhile to us um, over other kinds of ships. So again, we're all talking about planetary defense, jump point defense, it's all about layering our, our defensive operations, right? So against smaller, lower escalatory threats, we'll use frigates and light attack crafts and hangar defense platforms. Against larger threats, we'll use our destroyer fleet to deal with it. We then have a mine layer. Uh, uh, this is got a, a bit of a magazine. Uh, in fact, uh, did I not put the magazine on? I think I did not put the magazine on. Uh, magazine should be on for this guy. Because it's, oh, it's only got a few launchers. Yeah, we're going to do that. And I also forgot to put on the engineering spaces as well. Uh, engineering, engineering. Um, and if possible... Yeah, engineering spaces. That gets us about a year. We'll do 12 months. Um, What's the size of these again? Yeah, we'll do three instead. And I'll increase the fuel amount. Because I want to be able to fit this on our actual dock yard. There we go. We can't actually build escort carriers with our current dockyard, so we'll have to upsize these. But the point of this is, is we're going to carry missiles, uh, specifically mines, um, 41 mines, and we're going to be able to place these mines over jump points and over areas. And they are going, they are size 25. They contain four size six missiles each. And so 40 mines can fire a total of 160 size six missiles at our opponents. They can just sit at a jump point and wait for anything that comes through that is hostile, detonate, and uh, fire. And then all those missiles will swarm towards our enemy and detonate on the enemy uh, force. Um, which is great, of course. Uh, so, that is pretty much it in regards to most of our ships. What we are now going to do is have a look at ground force design. Now, you're going to ask yourselves, what is the point of a ground force, really? Some people like to prescribe to the doctrine that orbital... Um, Bombardment is superior. Unfortunately, in the world, that is not the case. Um, ground forces are useful for a few things. Holding out to get reinforcements to a colony. 
uh, defending a colony itself with surface orbit weapons, and then also assaulting enemy planets and seizing their territory, populations, installations, and whatnot. Generally, how I like to design armies, I like to have two different um, components. I like to have a garrison force. I like to have an assault force, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to design a garrison force, which will be, the entire point of it will be to uh, defend planets, okay? Uh, defend our colonies will be cheaper we'll use less good weapons but we'll be able to use the entrenchment of the world to relatively speaking be okay and then we'll have an assault force which will have the best armor the best weapons and that force uh will be used to retake the world but since we are since we are not trying to play an aggressive uh force aggressive army an aggressive uh nation we're trying to play more of focusing on our own defense we are not going to really build that many more of those specialized assault units instead we're going to focus on those defensive units where possible so what are we going to need well we're going to need infantry infantry are great at providing uh defensive weapons and uh, in terms of providing health points which is to soak damage uh we're going to do powered infantry armor we're not going to do powered infantry armor for these specific forces uh, we're going to do light infantry armor with personal weapons and these are going to be called Garrison Troopers. And again, if you've got recommendations for names or whatnot, let me know. We're going to put this at 2100. It's going to be our first generation of uh, force. And uh, the point of this uh, trooper will be just to hold the line. So we're going to instant that one. Then we are going to get a light anti-vehicle trooper. Uh, so we're going to add in uh, LAT. So LAT. Add that. Uh, we do not want light bombardment uh, at this level, and we do not want uh, light anti aircraft because the enemy don't want, will not have anti anti aircraft. In terms of crude served anti personnel weapons and larger stuff like that, we're going to put that in uh, another formation. Okay, so we're going to need the headquarters. I'm going to put these at 5,000 tons each. They're going to be half the strength of our main force. Um, as they're only the Megaros thing, because we need to be able to spread these out a lot more, so they need to be cheaper to realistically afford that cost. So we're going to call this uh, Battalion Headquarters. And we're going to make sure that is set to avoid combat. There we go. While we're here, we're also going to create a Logistics Module Truck. So we're going to call this the uh, Logistics Module 62. Avoid combat, create. Then we're going to need a regimental headquarters. So we're going to create a 25,000 ton regimental headquarters. This will contain, uh, this will have all our battalions under it. So regimental headquarters. Then we are going to create some static weapons. So I'm going to create medium bombardment uh, static weapons. Uh, so these are going to be MB-52s. And they are going to provide supporting fire. I'm going to also get some... Um, Crew served anti-personnel static. Oh, I just made a mistake. That is on no combat. Okay, we need to make sure that that was checked off. So I'm going to insert that again. I'm going to create some uh, crew served anti-personnel 24 weapon. Um, and that is going to provide us uh, a bunch more shots and static defensive bunkers, essentially. Think of these like bunkers. And uh, kind of, you know, make stuff disappear. Then I'm going to add in some uh, medium anti-vehicle. No, I think we don't do medium anti-vehicle. Now, what I am going to do, however, is we are going to get ourselves some uh, surface to orbit weapon systems. Okay, we're going to get some plasma carronades. And uh, I'm going to rename this to 30 centimeter grazer. Uh, I'm going to research that. And we're going to use that for our surface to orbit weapons as well. Uh, so that's a really nice range. And I'm going to include ECCM as well. And we're going to call this um, 30 centimeter surface to orbit anti centimeter anti ship STO. 30 centimeter grazer anti ship STO. Avoid combat is on. Infant that. And their purpose is going to be shooting stuff down. I'm also going to create a quad turret version as well, which is going to be called um, quad turret STO point defense. 
very good. And so we're going to create our battalion. So we're going to call this uh, Garrison Battalion. If I can spell Garrison. <laughs> uh, I'm going to call it, I'm going to put it under uh, Gar Garrison Force as well. We're going to put in, let's do 750 troopers. And then we're going to put in the rest of the lats. Let's do 50 LATs. Uh, let's, can we get like 75 LATs? That works for me. And then we can put in a battalion headquarters as well. And then we can also add in a few more infantry. So 755, 5,000 ton garrison battalion. We've got a bunch of uh, light anti-tank weapons to kill on your armor. And then we also have our garrison troopers. And then we have the headquarters as well. I'm going to make a regimental headquarters. I'm going to put that as garrison. And we are going to put in that a regimental headquarters and the rest will be logistics. So we're going to put in 50 logistics vehicles. I think we can put 75 in there. Yeah, 78 logistics vehicles. That's enough for our regimental headquarters. And then finally, we're going to create a, um, a garrison fire support battalion. Okay. And this is going to have in it our MB-52, so we're going to put 100 MB-52s in, oh actually we can put 50 MB-52s, um, 50 MB-52s, and anything else I want to put in there, we can put C, uh, CSAP as well, but they're not really going to be able to shoot anything are they, uh, so actually I'm going to reduce this to 500, and I'm going to put in, um, let's go 50 of these guys, uh, yeah, 50 of these guys, and then we'll do 515 of those. That gives it some basic bunkers that can uh, shoot some stuff, some static weapons to get away that full entrenchment. And I guess with this, we will just go for legitimately like 90, 90 fire support, uh, medium bombardment weapon systems. And we'll put in a battalion headquarters. And these guys can shoot from the back line against any enemy forces that are coming in. And the longer we basically... When the enemy invades the planet, we want the combat to go on for as long as possible. And in that sense, we want to have that bombardment constantly firing uh, from the back line that they can't hit. Uh, so we're going to go for 100. Let's go, I think 95 weapons is acceptable. What about 96? No, we're going to have to do 95 medium bombardment cannons in the back line. Then we're going to need a division. So we're going to create a 100,000 ton capacity uh, headquarters. Uh, and it's going to be called Infantry uh, Garrison Garrison Division Headquarters. 100. Is that that? And uh, then we're going to create a Garrison Division. And then we've done all of our Garrison Forces as needed. So we're going to create Garrison Division. Done. Okay. Then we're going to create more proper forces. So we're going to start with a Power Infantry Armoured. Improved personal weapons. Now, I'm going to use improved personal weapons because penetration is king. How the calculation works for um, for penetrating is there's no such thing as sustaining damage or sustaining armor damage. You just kill the, you either pen and then kill, or you do nothing, or you don't pen and you do nothing. Uh, or you pen and don't kill with damage and then you do nothing. So, penetration is really, really important. So, we're going to call this a. Um, do we want to use marines? I guess we. I guess might be a good idea. Yeah. Let's use. Let's use um. Uh, Commonwealth marine. Okay. This will be. This will be like its own branch. Okay. Instant that. Uh. Then we use some uh LAT version. Good. Uh. We're going to not use bombardment. Uh. We're not going to use cruiser density personnel either. Uh, we'll need the headquarters as well. So we're going to go Commonwealth, uh, Marine, uh, Battalion Headquarters. And this is going to be uh, 10,000 tons. Instant that. Good. And then we're going to need a Regimental Headquarters. So Regimental. That'll be 50,000 tons. Instant that. Uh, we're going to give it, and we are going to get some vehicles, I think, added on here. Uh, I'm thinking we go for light vehicles with medium auto cannons, which are a good balance to kind of break through infantry blocks. Um, and I'm going to call this Marine 
armored personnel carrier, infantry fighting vehicle 60. And uh, we're going to instant that with the medium auto cannons. And then we're going to create a HQ variant. And then finally, we're going to create a division headquarters of 200,000 tons. And that's going to be called Marine Division Headquarters. Done. And the last thing that we're going to do is we're also going to make a surf store with weapon time. But for now, uh, we're going to do Infantry Battalion uh, Marine. Marine. And I'm going to put in 500. Uh, let's do 600. 100. And then let's put in lats. We're going to put in, let's say, 100 lats. Uh, let's do 80. 85. Oh, yeah, I can get a lot bigger than this, can't I? Do 1,200. And then let's do 160. Uh, let's do 180. Nearly. Uh, 175. Okay, that works. Uh, we just need to find space for the battalion headquarters, Marine. Uh, Marine battalion headquarters. There we go. Add units, Marine battalion headquarters. Uh, no, I don't want to add a hundred of them. <laughs> oh, did I just delete? Oh, God, I just deleted the entire thing. <laughs> Let's just sort it out. Marine Battalion Headquarters, add units. 165, let's do 175. Uh, 172. Let's do line 999. And there we go. We've got our infantry battalion. Then we're going to do a uh, infantry regiment. Which is just going to be regimental headquarters with uh, Marine Regimental Headquarters with... All the logistics we need. Which is like 170. Uh, let's do 165. 155. Let's do 156. 157. There we go. And then Marine. Uh, Marine Division. MAR. And we're going to pull this. I'm going to put in the divisional headquarters. Okay, yeah, there's two more formations I want to build. I'm going to build this thing called a war stock. Uh, which is going to be a bit of everything. Uh, it's going to basically be where we're going to replace our forces from. Um, I'm just going to call this army. And I'm going to put in basically everything. Uh, so I'm going to put in a bunch of garrison troopers. I'm going to put in like, let's say, 5,000. I'm going to put in 5,000 Commonwealth Marines. Well, actually, let's do, uh, let's do like 2,500 Commonwealth Marines. I'm going to put in like 500 Garrison Lats. And I'm going to put in uh, 500 Commonwealth Lats. I'm going to put in a few Battalion Headquarters um, of either. A few Regimental Headquarters from either. Uh, I'm going to put in, let's say, uh, 300 Logistics. Now, let's do like 1,000 Logistics Trucks. Uh, I'm going to put in some medium bombardment cannons. So we're going to put in like 300 medium bombardment cannons. Uh, I'm going to put in uh, like 300 CSAP. And then I'm going to put in some IFVs. So we're going to put in like 300 IFVs. And then like one of those. There we go. And that's where we're going to be drawing a bunch of stuff. Then we need to make a... Um, Mechanized infantry battalion, uh, mech, uh, um, mobile support battalion, I think is a better name. And we're going to call that Marine. And we're going to put in a bunch of IFTs. We're going to do 100. Start with. Let's do like 150. 170. Uh, 165. There we go. And then we're going to put in the HQ. And that's done. And then finally, we're going to create a surface to orbit um, planetary defense battalion. And we're going to put that as garrison. 
And I'm going to put in there uh, 10 of these. I guess as they cost a 500, Jesus. Uh, I'm going to create five, five of these. I guess it's cost 250. That's acceptable. Uh, so we'll do five cold goals to it. So I'm going to put, well, I'm going to edit the name to be point defense. There we go. And then we're going to create a new one. We're going to call this Planetary Defense Battalion uh, Anti Ship Garrison. Then we're going to put in the 30 centimeter grazers. I'm going to put in, let's say, 10 of them again. So that's 10 grazers. Um, and those will be for shooting down ships. And that's basically everything that we are going to be needing. This has carried on for quite a bit of time. Um, but suffice it to say, we're pretty much done. Um, I'm going to uh, end the video here. Uh, but in the next video, which will be episode one, we'll be going through actually playing the game. But I hope you guys have enjoyed the setup and want to see more stuff like this. A big thanks to everyone who has watched. I'll be finishing off the rest of the stuff in the uh, background that we need to have done um, in a little bit. Um, but I'll see you guys in episode one. Goodbye.